Okay, so for your assignment, what I want you to do is just take a, a box. It can be any box, it could be a tea box, whatever. I don't care about graphics. Um, and I want you to just set it up as a still life in front of you. And I want you to set it up so that you mainly see a square in front of you. So for example, I'm actually, I'm gonna set up a box. <clears throat> for example, I mostly see a square or rectangle. I don't mostly see a corner. That's two point perspective, we're not getting into that yet. And I just want you to start by observing the box and sketching it very, very lightly. Use um, an H or an HB pencil so it's really easy to erase and you can make lots of mistakes. So first start by sketching the box. Then what I would like you to do is measure it. And if you know how to measure in the air, even better, I want you to measure the longest side that you see and then measure it top to bottom, or you can measure the side, but do it all like that. Um, so the box that I'm drawing here is deceiving because it is long and skinny. It looks like a brick, but because it's foreshortened, see how it gets skinnier like that. Very deceiving. So I want to do that measuring to make sure that it is correct. Um, once I've done the measuring and I feel that my angles are correct, I want to find my vanishing point. So how do I find my vanishing point? I see the top of the box and I see the right side of the box and therefore I know my vanishing point should be to the top right. Now, how do I find the vanishing point? Typically, when we just look at it in miniature, we draw the vanishing point on the page. Technically, it's landing on the horizon line, right? But in this circumstance, because I'm actually using a real box, a real box in real life as a still life, the vanishing point most likely is not going to land on the page. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the lines and the angles that already exist, and I'm going to follow them until they converge which most likely will happen off the page. And I would also recommend using a ruler to do this so that, of course, so you can keep your line straight, but also so that you can project much further out than your piece of paper. So this is how my drawing is going to end up. Again, make sure you measure first. And if you're doing multiple boxes at multiple angles, you're gonna wanna compare one to another. Now, the last thing I wanna show you is the wrong way to draw a box. I see a lot of boxes that end up looking something like this. So it's really easy to laugh at this because it looks absolutely ridiculous and it's very easy to judge when it's somebody else's. But when it happens to be right in front of you, sometimes we don't always see what's wrong with it. Now, why does this, we know it looks ridiculous, but why is it wrong? It's wrong because these lines are not converging, right? If I follow this, and then I follow this, and then I follow this, there's no rhyme or, region, rhyme or reason or logic to it. So that's one mistake that people make that I don't want you to make. Another example, is I'll see people draw a box beautifully, and then when I ask them to double check their work, but uh, actually that's terrible. As I ask them to double check their work, of course I can't find an eraser right now. When I ask them to double check their work, I ask them to draw the lines to the vanishing point, and this is what I get.
that doesn't really compute very well. And the reason is this break right here, this break right here, that, that doesn't make sense. Use these lines to tell you where the vanishing point should be. Use what's actually there. So if I redraw, I extend, I extend, and I extend, that makes more sense. So keep those things in mind as you move forward with this. And this is all one point perspective. The way that you know it's one point perspective is you mostly see a square in front of you and not a corner. You do see a bit of a corner, but it's much more about the square.